How can games stay relevant? So I was watching a video about how Bethesda had done a poor job in the marketing of Rage 2. The initial showing of the game was pretty good, but I haven't really seen much since the showing of that game. I mean, did anybody else know that Rage 2 is actually coming out on the 14th of May? Because I had no idea. I honestly thought it was going to come out a lot later than that, but I guess not. Looks fun. Hope it does well. This really got me thinking about a comment that was in my ideas for videos tab on my discord. This comment was actually made after my is insurgency sandstorm in trouble discussion video, which kind of touches on the idea of losing players. But let's see what the comment says. Perhaps a video on what you think the ideal method is for keeping a game alive or keeping interest in the game that's currently in development. Talk about what you think are mistakes that some devs make when it comes to the longevity of their games. Do they not communicate? Do they not add new content? Do they make changes that alienate the fans? that got them where they were. Is it some other factor entirely? And that's basically the premise of the question. If you want to read the rest, it is on the screen. Now, I am not someone who has all the answers, but what I can do is acknowledge all the problems that all of these games have. For this topic, I am going to only talk about four games in particular, World War III, Brown Branch, Vanguard 1944, Insurgency Sandstorm, four very different games, but all of them have low player counts. Let's start with World War III. World War III is a game that had very good advertising. It was a game that garnered a big fan base because, and this is just a theory, I think a lot of people, including myself, was looking for a game that was going to be a spiritual successor to Battlefield 4. At least that's what I think. Maybe you got it for a different reason? But during the time that Battlefield 5 was taking a lot of flack, the developers of World War 3 were really pushing that release date, even though there were a lot of people that were complaining about the beta, which does become apparent later. But the gameplay itself was actually not that bad. I found myself getting addicted to it. I could definitely definitely see this game being a decent spiritual successor for someone that's looking for a, like a Battlefield 4 light game but newer. But there was a gigantic problem that this game had and it was that some servers would actually be empty. Now how could this be? A game with extremely good advertising releasing at a time when it could have been a good alternative to Battlefield? I mean, there were a lot of people wanting to try out this game. So how could it be that the servers were almost half empty? Well, this plays back into when there were a lot of people who were in the beta telling the developers this same issue. The beta testers were saying that they weren't able to find people to play with. Now, whether that was because they didn't give them enough keys or the game just wasn't connecting them together, the jury's still out on this one. But what I can't say for sure is that the game had a big issue with trying to get people into the game and playing it because it took forever for people to get past the initial loading screen. There were reports of people who said that the loading screens would range anywhere from 2 hours to 24 hours. That's ridiculous. I guess I was one of the lucky ones, but I mean, it did take around 30 minutes to get into the game, so lucky, I guess. But even when I got into the game, about half of the matches that I played were nearly empty with like maybe two people on each team. So what we have here is a game that had very good marketing, but a very poor launch. And instead of listening to their beta testers, they tried to capitalize on the fallout with EA and Battlefield, or at least that's what I think. If you have a different opinion, let me know down in the comments. Since then, they have put out multiple updates but i have not been able to hop into the game because of uh technical difficulties but looking at steam charts it doesn't look like it's helping all that much honestly when it comes to staying relevant i'm not sure that there's much that they can do at this point i mean obviously they can work on the game and if they have enough money set up another ad campaign that basically says that hey we're like no man's sky we brought a bunch of shit in now and we're, we're you know we're, we're, we're good to go baby obviously that's one option but i mean if they don't have the money the next thing that they could do is try talking with youtubers because more than likely youtubers will actually just give them free coverage but that would have to be a really big effort getting in touch with a bunch of people that feel kind of burned at this point so they would have to wait maybe like a year or two the next thing that i could think that they could do is do free weekends because i'm sure a majority of people who bought the game initially aren't going to play it again so it's better to find a new audience that's willing to try it out and who better than the people who are trying out stuff for free right so long as the game is functioning i think it'll give them a good player base but not as much as they had in the beginning definitely not those are just my thoughts on world war 3 what are your thoughts tell me down in the comment section below because the next one we're going to be talking about is ground branch ground branch is kind of a curious case because there's a lot of people that are on the fence about buying ground branch but they're just waiting for updates like that's literally my comment section when it comes to ground branch like i'd get the game but the sound doesn't 
doesn't sound authentic. Like I'd get the game, but the animations just aren't there. I feel like the main problem with Ground Ranch is that the devs are holding back the game from being great, if that makes any sense. Now I get that the game is far from being finished. As it stands now, the game is currently still in alpha. The developers still have lots of plans to add a lot more things into the game. But at the moment, they've been busy trying to upgrade the engine, which isn't the first time they've actually upgraded the engine on Ground Branch. If I remember correctly, it started out in Unreal 3, and then they upgraded it to Unreal 4. So yeah, it, it's just been a bit of a process. It seems like it's been taking a little too long. But they have dropped some videos with the new gun sounds, and they sound pretty good. They have also posted a job listing for an animator, so that's cool to hear. The game just seriously needs some updates, because the last one was back in March, and my understanding is that they've been trying to upgrade the engine, and that's taken away from actually adding stuff to the game. But don't get me wrong, there is a bunch of stuff that has been added to the game, like a bunch of new things, but we would like some more of those new things, please. Ground Branch just so happens to be in a unique position because they don't have any competition, meaning no other game is trying to be like the original Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon. That's what this game is trying to accomplish, but it's still very early in development. So for this game to stay relevant, it needs updates. They said that they're going to have Team AI in the single player. They say that there's going to be prone. They say that they're going to add a climbing mechanic. They say that there's going to be a helicopter that drops you in. Updates on the thing they promise. But again, the game is extremely early, so we might not see that for a bit. But whenever they do add in all that stuff, all the people that are sitting on the fence will definitely go in and buy this game. Because there's a lot of people out there that loved the original Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon series. And if they need somebody to cover it, I'm down to cover it. There's a bunch of YouTubers that are sitting in the Ground Branch Discord right now. Some shadow YouTubers and YouTubers that have been deemed as embedded media willing to cover the game when it gets better. So that's pretty much my thoughts on Ground Branch. If you had different thoughts, tell me down in the comments. We are going to be moving on to Insurgency Sandstorm. When Insurgency Sandstorm launched, it wasn't that bad. I mean, a good number of people picked up the game and a decent amount of people have stayed around. But the number of people that could have picked up the game could have been a lot higher if they had listened to the community and added certain modes from their previous iteration of the game. I think a lot more people would have gotten it if that ambush or no buy petition is any indication, which basically lays out that the game isn't going to launch with specific modes, so they're not going to get the game. I looked at the petition and there's actually quite a bit of signatures on that, so that could be the reason why the game probably wasn't more successful at launch. Launch. Fast forward to when I came back to the game, and almost nothing really changed. Like, there wasn't that much new content. I mean, I know that there was at least five guns that were added and the optimization was, was upkept, but there wasn't enough to keep people interested or invested. There wasn't any mod support, there wasn't any new maps, no night maps, no nothing. I think they were mostly just focusing on the optimization of the game, but I could be wrong. But because there wasn't any major updates, the player base decided to decline. I mean, the player base isn't totally gone, but they seriously need to drop those updates to keep it fresh. Sandstorm is also a game where there's a lot of people that are sitting on the fence from the original, but I think a majority of them are waiting for the mods to kick in. Now, out of all the games that I am mentioning here, I believe that Sandstorm is probably probably the one that is the most better off, mainly because it's the most established out of all these other games. So they definitely have enough money to do another ad campaign, but I hope that they use some of that money to create a single player story, because that's one of the reasons why I decided to get the game, because I thought, you know, this game was going to have a single player story. But yeah, the main issue with Sandstorm is that it needs more updates, a lot of players also want game modes from the original, and mods. That I think will bring more people to the game, and also people who originally bought it back to the game game because they like the new updates at least in my opinion if you have a different opinion tell me down in the comments down below because we're going to be moving on to the last one which is vanguard normandy 1944 now if you haven't heard about this game I honestly don't blame you. Vanguard is a World War II game that is akin to Day of Infamy and Red Orchestra. It was a very fun, hardcore game that launched with no game-breaking issues. The game looked very good because uh, it's using that Crytek engine and it really shows. It had a grand total of three maps, but it felt more like 15 because of the day, evening, night, fog, raining day and night maps. And to top it all off, the game was going for exactly 15 bucks. Actually, when it first launched for me, when I was looking looking at the price tag, it was actually on sale, so it was really going for like 12 bucks when it first came out. So what was the issue here? Like this game sounded really good. Like how could it have not have gained a good player base? Well, Vanguard Normandy's ad campaign was basically non-existent. Yeah, 
I remember kickstarting for the game, and after every update that I would see on their Kickstarter, I would always put down in the comments section, Hey, so uh, when are we going to be able to try this? And they wouldn't respond. Like at one point, I was getting kind of mad because they never responded to me. I was like, okay, this is starting to feel like a scam. It wasn't until I was looking at my clan's Discord because they had posted a stream of Vanguard. Okay. What the fuck? Why am I not in this game? Did I not back it? I was beginning to get furious because I was seeing a bunch of people who I knew in the beta test on this stream. I came to the realization that in order for you to get into the beta, you'd have to have been in their discord. If there was any mention of this, I didn't see it. But thankfully I got into the game and thank goodness it was good. I ended up having fun. But the most shocking thing that I learned about Vanguard was that it was going to release the following week. And I was like, what? I'm just dumbstruck, like, wait a minute, I, I, I barely knew how to get into the beta, how are you gonna release without any, like, advertisements or anything like that? I was like, yo, hey, hey, listen, if you wanna do an interview, you know, on my channel, I'd be happy to do it for you, you know, just give me a time and date. They said yes, but, uh, they never contacted me. I mean, it's not like they have to, but, you know, you know, I was trying to help the game out, you know? Because it was so successful with the previous guy that I interviewed. So the only thing that I was only allowed to do was actually stream the game. But my channel is terrible when it comes to streaming. Not a lot of people watch it, and it's always laggy, so... I tried telling him that, and he said that... He just wanted streaming only. So I believe at the time the only people that actually covered it was me and Break the Vices. But then later on we did an event with a whole bunch of other YouTubers, which I really need to post that video. I've been slacking on it. But even then, that didn't exactly help out the game because the servers are still pretty empty. The game just seriously needed advertising because everything else would have been great. At least that's just my opinion when it comes to Vanguard. At this point, if they don't have enough money to advertise, then I would suggest that they do free weekends so that they can actually get people into the game. People have also suggested suggested that they should have AI in the game so that they can actually start up a match. I would disagree with that, but unfortunately there's not enough people to actually get into a game, so I'm gonna have to agree with that unfortunately. But yeah, those are just my thoughts on Vanguard, and that is basically the end of the video. So tell me your thoughts down in the comments section below. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye